Me, I hated the police growing up. Man, I disliked the police with passion. And anything police related, I didn't want no part to it. To me, uh, when I was six years old, growing up in Northeast Oklahoma City, the police actually kicked at my mom's door. My dad, who was a, one of the biggest drug dealers in Oklahoma City, had a whole lot of women, and basically he was married at the time, so he was using my mom's house to sell dope out of. So the police came, they took him to jail, took my mom to jail, a couple uncles, cousins, and then me and my other smaller cousin, we had to go to the shelter all night. Huh? So based on that incident, I hated the police, man. I disliked the police with passion. And so with that hatred and dislike for the police, I started hanging with my friends who were in gangs, my family members who sold drugs, and that's what I wanted to be for a long time. All right? If your dad is a police officer, when you grow up, you want to be a police officer. All right? Your mom is a nurse. You want to be a nurse, school teacher, so on and so on. All right? So with me and growing up in that environment, I thought, man, I want to be a gang member. I want to sell dope. I want all this fancy stuff. I was getting kicked out of school. I wasn't going to school. Breaking in cars, breaking in people's houses, right? All about chasing materialistic stuff. When I was growing up, Jordans were very, very popular, right? And so all the big homies and the guys with money, they would have all the young guys like myself go breaking cars, steal radios, they get us Jordans, right? So I go on this path, I man, I'm just it's destructive, man. We, man, a lot of my friends, we got banned from like public places. We can go to none of the malls. We can go to the flea market. Because they know TG and his crew hung out. There's going to be issues. There's going to be some fights. All right? Man, I'm going down this path until I get to middle school. Prior to me going to eighth grade, there was a guy, a man, who moved into our neighborhood. His name was Coach Jones, and he was an Air Force guy. They should take your Air Force base, and for some odd reason, he decided to move to the hood. We was like, bro, at all the places you can move, you can move to the hood, to the east side, northeast side, off of 23rd and Martin Luther King? Really? <laughs> What's up with that? When Coach Jones moved to the neighborhood, he tried to introduce all the young men to the game of basketball. I don't play basketball, we game bang. We ain't doing none of that. All right? So what Coach Jones did is he found out what we were into. Wait. I don't know what it is about the urban community. Hey, look at y'all feet, man. You got Dave, you got LeBron, you got all that stuff. That's what we wanted. So what Coach Jones did is he got our team sponsored by Nike. All right, all right. I'll fight now. I'm some free jewelry, some Nikes. <laughs> well, we just happened to do that and get it in the positive now. Had to go to school. Had to go to practice. and had to break your car. and had to beat up people for it. He was getting all this stuff in a positive manner. And what happens is we took, he took us out of our element. So instead of just being in the hood, we're going around the country playing basketball, all right? I got really good at the game of basketball. I just went to Douglas High School. Uh, that's when a lot of colleges started taking interest in me, right? I'm playing basketball, but I didn't change my friends. I still got my same friends. So we go hoop, then on the weekend, or after practice, we're still doing basketball, all right? <clears throat> so what happened is when I was at Douglas High School, I met a school resource officer named Sergeant Cowell. Very high up. Man, a lot of the officers know who that is, right? And that dude was crazy, hardcore, raw. Right? He used to always critique all the basketball players after the game. He's like, hey, man, this is what you need to work on. You need to do this, do that. He's trying to talk to TV. Man, I ain't talking to the police, bro. I don't got nothing to say to you, man. Nothing. Nothing at all. ISS all the time. Kicked me out of school a couple times. I'm still not talking to you, bro. One day I'm walking down the hallway, headed to the gym. Sergeant Kyle was kidnapping me. Not really. But he made me come into his office. He's like, hey, you couldn't talk to me today, bro. I ain't talking to you. He's like, all right, you're not going to practice. And at this time, I was in love with the game of basketball. I was like, man, I ain't talking to you. He's like, all right, you ain't going to practice. So basically, I just let out. I let it out. I was like, man. I don't like the police because I took my mom to jail, took my dad to jail. All I got to do is harass people. All I got to do is pick on people. Da, 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 da. And I had a laundry list of complaints against the police. Right? So I was just shaking his head like, all right. He leaned back in his chair. He was like, well, what did they do? What did they do? 
And he pissed off about everything, but what did they do? You see, that was the first time in my life I realized that we as human beings, we got choices. Hmm. We got choices to do any and everything we want to do. You know, people, you got a choice to go to school, not go to school, get in the car with the homies, you know they up to no good, right? All the choices you make in life is up to you. But the minute you do something negative, it's always up to somebody else. You know, decide how long you're going to stay in prison, how long you're going to go to jail, how long you're going to be on punishment, how long you're going to be suspended. It's like, TG, instead of being pissed off about it, do something about it, bro. Do something about it, all right? Both of my parents, high school dropouts. I got a master's degree now, all right? Both of my parents, illegal criminal activities, all right? I've been a police officer for 10 years. My dad, or whatever you want to call it, dude, basically just used my mom's house and sell dope out. I got a 10-year-old son. Right? The moral of my story, man, is that it's not how you start, it's how you finish. <clears throat> right? I think Roscoe asked a lot of guys, man, about your family situation. Are you poor? Are you struggling? Right? But the thing about that is that if you're born poor, that's not your fault. That's not your fault. But if you die poor, whose fault is that? Whose fault is it? Yeah, your fault. You gotta capitalize on opportunities, man. And the world, the world is tough. It's not gonna give you stuff, you gotta go get it. You gotta make opportunities, right? And not all opportunities are gonna come from the people who look like you. You gotta branch out, right? You gotta get rid of the homeboys and they trying to go nowhere, right? That's like the number one hindrance is your homeboys, your homegirls, right? At the end of the day, and you can go ask all the men, all your homeboys in high school, I mean, you thought it was cool. I can talk to them dudes no more after high school. Maybe a two or three at the most. So mm-hmm. think about that, man. Think about your future, man. It's not how you start, it's how you finish. Set goals. Set goals, man. You got the opportunity to change your family tree like Rocco said. Not everybody in here is going to be police officers. Right? Not all of y'all know what y'all want to do, but at least make a list of all the things you don't want. I don't want to be poor. I don't want to have to worry about the lights not being on. Right? I don't want to worry about my kids not having good shoes or, or food on the table. Right? I start there. I start there. Right? That's all I got, man. Yeah. <laughs>